Hello everyone. In the world of structural designing, there are two main design philosophies which are commonly used. They are one, we have allowable stress or strength design. And this can be abbreviated as ASD. Then we also have what we know as load and resistant factor design. And this can be abbreviated as LROFD. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you in depth the difference between allowable strength design and load resistant factor design. First of all, you need to know that the primary goal of a structural designer is to size members and components of a system in order to safely resist load. So take note of that. Now let's discuss the meaning of these design philosophies. So the first one, ASD, which is allowable stress or strength design. This is based on safety factor. So ASD is based on safety factors. So this is based on safety factors. Now what I mean by that is we use factor of safety. Now let me explain this clearly. Let's say for example I have a chair and my job as a structural engineer is to design a commercialized chair. So as a structural designer what I need to do is to tell the consumer who is going to use the chair the load carrying capacity of the chair. Now how will I do that as the designer? I can go to the lab or somewhere else, use some testing and equipment. I can test the load carrying capacity of the chair. Now, I can put the chair under a large scale actuator and apply a load on it. I keep applying the load until the chair breaks. So I keep applying the load until the chair breaks. So let's say the chair fails at 2000 kiloniton. So 2000 kiloniton will be called the actual or nominal capacity. So this is the actual or nominal nominal capacity. So that is the force it take for the chair to fail. Now the question is, as a designer, will you tell the consumer that 2000 kiloniton is the force it will take the chair to fail? Obviously no, because I will be marketing this chair to the customers. So because of that, I might say, no, I'm going to put a little bit of safety on it. Now let's say I use a factor of safety of 2. So Fs is equals to 2. So this is the factor of safety. So meaning... If I now take the chair and sell it to a consumer, I would then say the allowable capacity of the chair is, so I have, I have reduced um, the nominal capacity from 2000 kiloniton because I use a factor of safety of 2, it is not going to be uh, 1000 kiloniton. So meaning right now, the allowable, allowable capacity Arrival capacity now is equal to 1000 1000 kilonewton. So this is the arrival capacity. Why the nominal the nominal capacity is equal to 2000 2000 kilonewton. So as you can see, I have reduced the reload it take the chair to fail from 2000 kilonewton to 1000 kilonewton. So I reduce the nominal capacity based on a factor of safety of 2. So because I don't want the consumer to apply the reload of 2000 kilonewton, I want them to think that the maximum load it can take 
is 1000 kN so as not to compromise the safety of the chair. So this is what we know as ASD or Allible Stress and Strength Design. So it is basically when we apply factor of safety to our load. Now let's talk about the second design philosophy, which is load and resistant factor design. Now, let's say we take the chair to the lab again, and we know that the load it takes the chair to fail is 2000 kN from the previous example. The question is, if we test the load bearing capacity of the chair again, do you think the chair is going to fail at exactly 2000 kN again? Probably not. It might fail with, let's say, 958 kN. It might fail with 1050 kN. It might fail with 3000 kN. There is going to be some scattered. Like that is, there's going to be uh, some scattered values all over the place. So because of this, we are going to have uncertainties. So because of this, we are going to have uncertainties. And the reason for this is because of the uncertainties. So in structural design, there are some uncertainties we need to account for. So let's say, for example, a door in a building. There will be uncertainties of every door inside the building. That is, let's say, the young modulus of every piece might vary. So this is the meaning of LROFD, that is load and resistant factor design. So basically, LROFD, it takes into account the uncertainties of our design. While ASD, which is allowable strength and design, does not take into account the uncertainties of the design. So ASD is more historical, that is, it is a more historical method of structural design which involve only the use of factor of safety. So let me write this. So ASD is a more ASD is a more historical historical method. It's a more historical method of structural of structural design. And this involves the use of factor of safety. And this might be based on experience so it might be based on experience to get the factor of safety so because we are dealing with products that are manufactured instead of applying just a factor of safety like two three for example to the load we can apply a factor of safety to the load and to the resistance because of uncertainties so this is where LROFD come into place. So it take account into the uncertainties associated with the load and also the uncertainties associated with the resistance. So because of that, structural designers, they tend to go more uh, with the LROFD design philosophies because it take uh, into account uncertainties with the load and also uncertainties with the resistance. So this is just like uh, the, uh, the probability. So we tend, uh, social designers tend to go with LROFD more compared to ASD. So let me write a general uh, different differentiation. So ASD, ASD take into account the factor of safety. So this is AFD. So take note of that. So this is ASD. Why LROFD? LROFD. LROFD. This take into account. This take into account the uncertainties. 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 Into account into account so the uncertainties with the load and the uncertainties with the resistance so in a nutshell lrofd is more is more preferable than asd so this is the difference between asd and lrofd design philosophies so thanks for watching if you find this tutorial useful please do not hesitate to subscribe to the channel for more videos 
and also like this video and share this video to friends and most importantly click the bell notification icon so that whenever i upload a new video you'll be the first to get notified thanks for watching bye bye